everyone and welcome back to my channel. I've had so many requests for revision tips for geography and history and for English and science and as much as I would love to do one for every single subject, <laughs> I just can't. I've decided to give you revision tips for every single subject in this video. The timestamps for the subjects will be listed down below and this covers both GCSE and A level as the revision technique I wouldn't say is too dissimilar so click down below to go to the specific subjects that you are interested in because I know that not everyone does everything. These are last minute revision tips. Different subjects require slightly different revision styles. You wouldn't revise in the same way that you'd revise for English as you would for maths. They're totally different in terms of style and the kind of content that you're actually trying to memorize. What I've done is I've looked at all the specifications for all the subjects and I found a few main bullet point tips for each subject. I'm gonna start off with science and I'm gonna split it up into biology, chemistry and physics. Biology, you want to focus right now on the organisation of different systems. So for example, you need to know very well the way that the gaseous system works, the way that the transport system works, the way that the digestive system works and kind of summarising them and to be able to summarise them very quickly. You should also be learning diagrams in order to help you maybe draw them out in the exam because don't forget, I know a lot of students don't know this, but you can get marks from diagrams. So if you are struggling with describing something and describing a cell or describing a microscope or describing whatever it is, if you were able to draw it out instead and label it correctly, you can gain the full marks. If you are someone who's a visual learner and has a more photographic memory, then being able to draw the diagrams out is really useful and I'd highly recommend this. You should also really be hammering into your mind right now the description of different molecules. So for example, enzymes. Well, how do enzymes work? What are the key words? The key word is active site. The key word is complementary. So what are the words that you need to be able to know to describe all the different processes and pathways? If you think about what gets you marks, it is actually being able to hit the keywords that are in the mark scheme. If you're able to describe enzymes, but you haven't used the words that are in the mark scheme, then you might not get those marks. So make sure that when you are revising, you're thinking, what are the keywords that I need to know to be able to answer this this question correctly. So moving on to chemistry. So for chemistry, you should be thinking about the properties of different kinds of molecules. So in the periodic table, what are the properties? And also you should be constantly testing yourself with the definitions. So there are loads of definitions in chemistry. So for example, a noble gas. What is a noble gas and what is the definition for it? which part of the periodic table are the noble gases in, what do you call that column. Also be aware of atomic structures and you should be able to recognise structures and be able to draw certain structures as well. Moving on to physics, you should be really confident in reading graphs. So you should be able to read a graph, uh, interpret it, describe it, analyse it and summarise its results. So again, if you need practice on this, go and check out a few past papers from the past couple of years and make sure that you are able to describe, analyze, explain, and that you know the difference between those words. What does describe mean? What does analyze mean? What does explain mean when it comes to graphs? And this kind of links in actually quite a bit with biology as well, because I've seen quite a few graph questions in biology as well, where you have to describe the graph. Um, and other times you have to explain the graph and knowing the difference between those keywords. Just make sure that you know what formula it is that you need to know, write them all down on a sheet of paper and keep on going through that every single day. Even if it takes you just five minutes, just go through your formula list and, and just make sure that you've memorized them and you're ready to answer any question on uh, that, that requires the use of a formula. All right, so moving on to maths. Now for maths, maths is very different to most subjects in the way that you study. Maths requires a lot of practice and a lot of application. So in order to revise from now for maths, you should be practicing questions pretty much every single day. A topic that you should be really focusing on is trig. Um, so Sokotoa and Pythagoras, those are topics that pretty much always come up. So really focus on them, know how to use sine cos tan, know how to use your calculator, that I cannot emphasize that, know how to use your calculator, know how to locate pi, um, squared, square root, all of these things that I know that you probably already know, but the inverse sign, so sine inverse and cos inverse, etc. know how to use them and make sure your calculator settings have been set back to default. Uh, it's really important that you're not using a different setting which could give you different answers. For last minute revision, just double check the fundamental techniques that you should be able to do, which is factorizing, which is uh, expanding. Like I said, trig is a big one that you should be able to do. Fractions, decimal percentages, those are you know topics that we should be really able to convert in between very quickly. Keep on thinking about what 
our fundamental topics and how can I just make sure that I can do those really well. All right, moving on to English. So English splits into English literature and English language. So with literature, uh, know your books and know your texts and your poems. I obviously can't give you specific details on each text, but the one thing I'd recommend you to do is just go over a summary of your text. Um, Spark Notes is an amazing website I'll leave down below that summarizes your text it pretty much has all the text that GCSE and A-level students do. Make sure you've reminded yourself of the storyline, the plot, um, what the main themes are for each of your each of your texts, um, and think about the main quotes. Think about what quotes you may use if you were asked about romance in Romeo and Juliet. What quotes would you use if you were asked about revenge in Macbeth? Um, think about the quotes and that will really help when it comes to an exam because then you've got those quotes there and you know which is most appropriate for different themes. Uh, for literature and also for language, I'm going to also go into language, um, know how to compare texts. Uh, this is a big, big topic. So when comparing texts, you want to look at the tone of the writing, you want to look at the style, the structure, the, the narrative, what, what kind of themes go through the play. I recommend you to group your poems. So have a, a list of different themes. So for example, uh, like I said, romance, foreshadowing, revenge, um, feminism, have these themes and then group your poems. So you probably have uh, quite a few poems that you have learnt, put them into different boxes. Some might, might go into two boxes, but what that will do is it really help you to, when you see the question, you already know in your head which is the best poem to use because you've already kind of pre-planned that a little bit um, and that's that would help you so much in the exam and it's a good idea to do that now because you are revising last minute and you probably have gone through a lot of the poems in the text uh, quite fresh again and then if you want to go one step further to really elevate your revision find a quote or two that fit into that theme so if you're thinking about Romeo and Juliet in romance what high which quotes highlight romance in Romeo and Juliet. And then let's say you also have Romeo and Juliet in revenge, which quotes would highlight that um, in, for revenge? So, so moving on to languages, so MFL, learning Spanish or French, for example, know your vocabulary. I cannot emphasize this enough. Make sure that you know the key vocabulary that describe people, that describe where you live, that describe the environment, that describe your job, what you do, that describe school. A key tip that I'll give you for revising last minute is active recall all the time and really immersing yourself into the language and I know that's really hard being in the UK and obviously not having French around you all the time or Spanish around you all the time but let's say you've revised for science or geography or maths um, and then you have a bit of a break it, during that break watch a youtuber who is speaking in French or watch something in French or listen to something in Spanish so I know that although it might seem like you're not revising, you actually are because you're constantly having that language and the sounds and the, the way that it feels put into your, into your mind. You should also focus quite heavily on questions, being able to ask questions and also being able to listen and answer to questions. All right, moving on to geography. So with geography, I looked online and geography is quite hard to be able to summarize because different um, exam boards are quite different in, in the actual content itself. What I can say overall is be able to describe environments. Cut down the information that you're learning into the keywords and look at the mark schemes to find out which words are the examiners expecting me to know. Which words are the examiners expecting me to write and include in my paragraphs? You know that if you are given a question that has to do with a certain environment, be it UK or not, you can retrieve those keywords from your memory and then use that to write a, a, a sentence or an essay or a paragraph, whatever you've been asked to do. The second part that I found to be quite consistent in all the different um, specs is your numerical skills, your stats skills, and your graphic skills skills. So your graphical skills, being able to draw graphs, interpret graphs, this is a huge one and I think this overlaps quite heavily with maths and also with physics be, and biology actually. Being able to interpret graphs and know what they mean and, and be able to apply that interpretation to your theory. Uh, usually they'll say, usually there'll be a question where they've got a graph, they ask you to describe it. So describing means that you, you're just saying what's happening. It started from this point, it's gone up here, it's gone down here, it stopped here, plateaued here etc. So you've just described it. And then it might say, explain this graph using what you know about X, Y, and Z. You then need to link what you've just said, what you've just described, 
to what you know so like i said being able to really read a graph take some time to understand what's on my y-axis what's on my x-axis what does this graph mean before you dive into answering the question okay so moving on to re religious education know the main belief systems so for the different religions so for example i think the main religions they learn is islam christianity buddhism sikhism judaism i believe those are the five and probably atheism as well so if a religion for example like islam believes in one god know that that is the main belief system if another religion believes in a, a different god or in, a, in no god know that that is the main belief system they also have these other aspects to their religion you should also learn the main celebrations and the main practices for each religion. It's quite close to the exam now, so you don't want to waste time faffing around with information that may not be that important or that you don't have time to learn right now. So do make sure that you know the main belief systems, what the main celebrations are, what they do for the celebrations, and um, the different sects as well. So for example, within Islam, you have Shias, you have Sunnis, you have different sort of sects. What do they mean? What are they? What is their differences? Um, and you should be able to list them and say them out loud. And one way that I'd recommend you to do that right now, quite close to, to the exam, is by actually just vocalizing it. So walk around your house and just say, all right, so in Islam, there's five different sects. Uh, for example, there aren't five, but there are five different sects. One is called this, one is called that, one is called that, one is called that. This one does this, this, this. This is the difference between that one, etc, etc. And just try to make sure that you're able to say it vocally. If you can say it vocally, then guaranteed you'll be able to write it. Moving on to PE, physical education. I'm not going to be focusing on the physical aspect because I don't really know much about it. But the theory aspect of it is very heavily biology. So make sure that you know your anatomy very well. So know the systems that you need to know. The muscular system. Print out an unlabeled muscular system and label all the parts that you should be able to label if you forget a part then obviously go back and revise that part and remind yourself what that part is you do not need to know every single muscle so make sure that you're only labeling the parts that you should know the way to do this is go to your textbook find a picture of the muscular system the parts that you should know and then just hide all of the labels and then just rewrite them so what you could do is just get little post-it notes and hide all the labels just cover them up and then rewrite it on top and just check keep on checking that you got that right it's called active recall and it means that you're constantly constantly reminding yourself actively uh, what it is that you have to learn passive learning is when you just read something and you just kind of walk away active is when you're actually applying what you know and you're constantly learning and unlearning and relearning and finding out what you don't know you should also be quite confident in explaining the different diets and also nutrition and what impact that has upon training and fitness and health and obviously on the body. So again, it really depends on what spec you're on, so I can't go into too much detail, but nutrition and diet and fitness training is one that kind of overlaps between all of them. Okay, so my favorite, well, history. I did really enjoy this subject when I was in school, I did. What you should be doing for last minute revision is going through a timeline of events. Now again, this is another subject where, where the different exam boards are totally different in content, so I really struggled with just finding a pinpointing a specific part that you should be learning. So for the period of history that you're learning, you should know what happened if it's a world war, why did it happen, what happened during, what happened after. So just knowing that timeline and being able to identify the names of people that were involved or the groups that were involved, the political parties, dates are really important. You should be able to say when World War One, World War Two was, if that's part of your, obviously if that's part of your content and part of your syllabus. What I recommend you to do is write down all the events that you need to learn and then write down the dates on the, the right hand side and then cover the dates up and then write down the dates and then just double check that you got it right. If you got one wrong, do it again. Then what you can do is change the order around so you're not obviously memorizing the order, change the order around and then again, write the dates out, check, shuffle and write them out, check, keep on going until you're able to say the dates at any point and trust me this sounds like it's a very long process but it honestly doesn't take that long doing that and shuffling it and rewriting it takes about half an hour and by that point you've learned all the dates that's perfect and you can move on and then learn some information about the names or why or what or, or when things happen so just be just actively recalling and i think this goes back to a lot of other subjects that i've just talked about being able to go back and check 
that you can actually retrieve that information. But if you're not actually testing yourself, then how do you know that you're gonna be able to retrieve this information in an exam? You don't. So do make sure that you're constantly testing yourself in whatever capacity you possibly can. Okay, dokes, moving on to design and technology. This was another subject that I really enjoyed during year seven, eight, and nine, and then I didn't take it on in year 10. DT is a subject, design and technology is a subject that is ever growing and loads of new information is coming out and emerging technologies are coming out so you should be able to say what these new technologies are and what is emerging so think about that and even look online to find to find technologies that you may not have been taught about but that would look really good in an exam if you were given a short essay question different types of materials and what they do so when are they used what are their advantages what are their disadvantages how do they perform what makes them unique so for example are they durable are they not? Are they able to be recycled? That is a huge thing these days. Are they able to be recycled? Is the cost low? Those are all unique capabilities of a particular material that allows it, that would that would lead it to being chosen over a different material. And also how, how do they look? How do they perform under pressure, under stress? What I'd recommend is list all the different materials that you've learned and then list advantages, disadvantages, unique capabilities, um, how long do they last for, how are they manufactured, etc, etc. And that means that if you learn that table and you keep rewriting that table until the exam, you have all that information there and then all you need to do is put that into sentences and apply that information onto a question that may be asking you about something that you haven't necessarily seen before, but it's asking you about materials and you can then apply your information that you know onto that particular. Okay, so the last one that I have, the last one is computer science. So for computer science, you should be able to describe the different types of programs and, the, and, and programming in general. There's loads of different programming language, so you should be able to describe them, know what the differences are. Um, again, with computer science, there's a lot of terminology. I was, again, when I was researching searching for this video, I was looking at the computer science um, content for, I can't, can't remember which exam board it was, but there's so much terminology. So really using the retrieval and association method where you have the information that you need to learn, you break it down into keywords and those keywords are what you memorize. And hopefully what that will do is when you're given a question and you're prompted, you can then associate those keywords to that question and then retrieve the information that you need to know and be able to write that into, into a coherent sentence. I don't know much about computer science, so any tips down below would be highly appreciated. That is the end of the video. I'm so sorry if I didn't manage to do every single subject. I did look at the list and there were a lot. I tried to pick the ones that students mainly do. Um, if there are any specific subjects that I haven't covered, please leave them down below. I'll just reply back to you directly. Do let me know if this was helpful. Give me a huge thumbs up and don't forget to press subscribe. And help your friends out, share it with your friends and good luck with your exams. Don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what it is that you're doing to be able to help you boost up your exam grades this exam season. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.